Welcome to the Data Governance series of video tutorials from MarkLogic University. In this episode, we'll discuss how to track data provenance using MarkLogic. In this tutorial, you will learn what provenance is and how to track it in MarkLogic using the Data Hub framework and the envelope pattern. So what is provenance? Provenance is defined as the place of origin of something, and that something that we're talking about here is data. Data provenance refers to records of the inputs, entities, systems, and processes that influence data of interest. It provides a historical record of the data and its origins. Knowing the origin is critical to tracking data lineage. When using MarkLogic to integrate data silos, you're going to be bringing in data from multiple sources to create a data hub. So we're going to want to track provenance but we don't want to impact the integrity of the source data by directly manipulating it to include that information about provenance. The ideal solution is easy to achieve by using the MarkLogic Data Hub framework and by applying the envelope pattern. Let's look at an example from the point of view of a fictitious insurance company. Acme Insurance is using MarkLogic to accelerate the integration of data from companies that they have acquired. And recently, Acme has acquired a smaller auto insurance company. So what does our data look like? Let's assume there are three main entities currently stored in an RDBMS, and Acme needs to bring those into the data hub. Those entities include customers. This is information about every customer. That also includes policies. When a customer gets a quote and then purchases insurance, that results in a policy. And lastly, we'll have claims. If during the life of a policy, a customer is involved in an accident, the result is going to be claim data. And the company that we acquired stores this information about these entities in an RDBMS that looks like this. Go ahead and pause the video here if you'd like to study this data model. Now, Acme Insurance knows from their experience in acquiring other companies that no two companies model this customer policy and claim data the exact same way, even though they're logically all the same things across those acquired companies. So rather than waste a lot of time and money trying to perpetually modify the RDBMS schema every time they make an acquisition, Acme has decided to use MarkLogic to quickly and efficiently bring these new data sources from an acquired company into their data hub. So Acme has gone and exported the data from that RDBMS and yielded one CSV file per table. And this is where we're going to start from in our upcoming hands-on example. So we will begin by using the data hub framework pattern of ingest, harmonize, and serve. And it's during the ingest phase that will want to track the provenance of our data in the resulting documents that get put into the database. That way we have a record of such pieces of information like who loaded this data, where did this data come from, and when was this data loaded. And outside of the documents that get loaded, we'll also want to preserve information about the job that was run in order to load that data. And when we ingest raw data using the Data Hub framework, the envelope pattern will be set up for us automatically in the general structure that you see here. The instance property will contain the raw information as it was in the source system. We want to preserve that as is, so we're going to track our provenance data in the headers section of the envelope. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. To follow along with this hands-on example at home, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go out to the MarkLogic University GitHub site. Now once you're there, look for the project called Governance, and that's where all the information related to this series can be found. And if you look at this project, you'll notice that there's a nice little readme describing the project, and it also outlines all of the things that you're going to need if you want to do the hands-on work on your own machine. And in order to get set up, you're going to need MarkLogic 9 up and running. You're going to want to clone this GitHub repository. You're going to want to download the latest MarkLogic Data Hub Framework Quick Start file. And you're going to need Java JDK version 8 or greater in order to run the Data Hub Framework. 
If you're unfamiliar with some of these concepts that we're talking about, take a look at some of these additional learning resources where you can get access to free training and tutorials to learn more about MarkLogic and the Data Hub framework. All right, so once you got all those prerequisites handled, your local machine is probably going to look something like this. You've cloned that governance project from the GitHub site, and that's going to give you all the data and the solution code. And you've also downloaded the Quick Start WAR file. To keep things simple, I've just went ahead and placed my Quick Start WAR file in this governance folder. And the first thing that you're going to need to do is launch the Data Hub framework. To do that, go to a command line, navigate into the folder where you have the Quick Start file, and run the following command. And once the Data Hub framework is ready to be used, you'll see this message, and we can go ahead and launch the Quick Start user interface by going out to port 8080. So let's open up a browser tab and go out to 8080. And now we're going to create a new Data Hub for this project. And by default, we're going to get placed into the folder where we're running the Quick Start user interface from. And that's okay, so let's just go ahead and select that and click Next. Now we need to initialize our project. And for most of these settings, the defaults are OK. However, let's go ahead and give our Data Hub a more descriptive name. And since our hypothetical example here is Acme Insurance, let's call this Acme Data Hub. And let's go ahead and click Initialize. Once the project has been initialized, we can then go ahead and click the Next button. And now we need to pick which environment we want to create this Data Hub on. Let's go ahead to choose our local environment, which is indicative of development. Next, we're going to have to authenticate against MarkLogic server. Please use whatever admin credentials you have set up on your instance. For me, that's really simple, admin and admin. So I'm going to go ahead and enter those and then click Login. Once I've logged in, it sees that installation of this hub has yet to occur. So we're going to go ahead and just click the Install button, and this will create all the necessary resources for our Data Hub. And once our Data Hub has been installed, you should see all the associated databases related to this hub, and you'll notice that they are, in fact, right now at least, empty. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to build out our hub is create an entity. So let's click on Entities up here. And we don't have any entities defined yet, so let's click the wrench icon to create a new one. And then let's click New Entity. Now remember, for our Acme Insurance example, we're going to be dealing with three entities, Customers, Policies, and Claims. Let's go ahead and create an entity called Customer. And for now, let's just accept the defaults and go ahead and click Save. Now we've created that entity, we can organize it on the screen here for us. We've got our customer entity created. Let's load some customer data. To load data, we're going to create a flow. So let's click on Flows, and we see our customer entity here on the left-hand column. And to load data, we want to create an input flow. So let's click this plus icon to create an input flow. And I'm going to call this Load Customer Data. And we're going to use the defaults, which are going to be JavaScript for our programming plugins and data format of JSON. So let's go ahead and click Create. And now we've got this Load Customer Data Flow. Let's click on that flow to configure it. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is choose the data that we wish to load. In this case, that is going to be in our governance project that we downloaded from the GitHub site. And when you're in that folder, you'll notice that there's a folder called Data. Let's select that Data folder, and then let's go into the Customers folder. And that's where the CSV file lives. And if you recall from our discussion earlier, that CSV data for Customers looks like this. So to load that data, let's configure our flow to deal with delimited type text data. And so if we expand these general options here, we'll see that there's this option called input file type. 
Now it defaults to documents, but we're dealing with a delimited text format. So let's choose delimited text. And then MarkLogic and the Data Hub framework will be able to ingest that and create documents for us. We can use some of these other defaults as is, but let's control the resulting URI of the documents that created. So let's say that for the start of the URI, we would like it to be slash customer slash. And then for the end or the suffix of the URI, we want it to represent the document type that we're actually going to be creating. And since that's JSON, we'll set the suffix to be dot JSON. That way our URI strings that identify the resulting documents are descriptive of the data itself. So once we've set up those configurations, let's go down here and click Save Options. Now remember what our goal was here in this example. Our goal is to ingest this data from the source system and track its provenance or origin information in the envelope. So to control the envelope, we can go up here to our input flow and we can manipulate the data that we structure inside each section of that envelope. And if you recall, our goal is to manipulate that data and put it into the headers section. So let's click the headers icon up here and this will open up the headers plugin code which will enable us to customize this as server-side JavaScript code. And we can simply manipulate the header by manipulating what we return in this plugin. So if you recall, we wanted to return three pieces of information. Who loaded it? Where that data came from? Its source system? And when that data was loaded? To track that information, let's go ahead and modify the return. So let's modify this plugin code to return a property called provenance which will include the loaded by information, which we get through a function call that will return the current user that is running this job, the source system, which we'll just hard code as a string to describe where this data came from, and then the load date, which we'll define programmatically using the function fn current date. Now, you can type all of this by hand if desired, or you can reference the solution code. You might notice that in the project that you cloned from the GitHub site, there's a folder called Solution Code, and inside of there is Episode 1 and the fully functioning version of headers.sjs. You can copy and paste this code from there if so desired. Once you've manipulated this plugin, let's go ahead and click the Save button. Now what we need to do is actually run this input flow. So let's go back here to the Flow Info tab and let's scroll to the bottom and let's click Run Import. And once that job has finished running, we can then go out and explore the data. So let's go ahead and click on Browse Data. And here we'll see that we imported all the data from that CSV file. It resulted in two different customer documents. And if we look at the customer document, we'll see that we've built out the envelope exactly as designed. So this example enabled us to achieve our goal, which was to track header information in our envelope that describes the provenance of this data while maintaining the original data in its unmanipulated form in the instance section of our document. Now remember, the other key thing when talking about tracking provenance and lineage is that the job information itself is valuable. And so if we look over here on the jobs tab, we'll actually see that that information is stored in the database as well. And we can also look back at that job information to have visibility about it in the future. Now it's your chance to apply what you've learned. We've loaded the customer data, but you should now repeat this process to create entities and input flows to load the policy and claim data as well and make sure to manipulate that header plugin so that you can track provenance. In this episode, you learned what provenance is and how to track it in MarkLogic using the Data Hub framework and the envelope pattern. As a next step, make sure you go out and get MarkLogic and access all the examples for this episode through the MarkLogic University GitHub site. And for your additional training needs, 
make sure to check out marklogic.com training where you can learn about all of our different courses and learning resources that are available to you for free.